Hello everybody. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. I wanted to talk a little bit about animal protein versus plant protein because I'm so sick and tired of hearing how plant protein is not inferior to animal protein. <sighs> the vegan propaganda got everybody basically talking like an idiot. Anyway, did you know that there are various methods for determining protein quality of foods? And they are as follows. The BV, biological value, test examines nitrogen balance. Hmm. This relates to the body's ability to digest, absorb, and excrete given proteins, which are the body's source of nitrogen. BV testing is a lengthy and somewhat expensive process that it requires test subjects to fast for several days and then adhere to a strict diet containing protein in only the form being tested. A lengthy process. Lots of room for error. Their urine and feces are tested for nitrogen levels after fasting and while on the diet. To determine the biological value, the nitrogen levels are compared to that of the whole food. However, both exercise and a protein deficient diet or fasting, which is what you're supposed to do before taking this test, will promote nitrogen retention, which could compromise the results. So not a very good test. I would add one more thing. It doesn't really look at bioavailability. And it doesn't really look at digestion inside the body. It just looks at the food and then it looks at the poop basically and there are the problems that they list with that method then there is the chemical score which compares essential amino acid levels to measure protein quality the EAA profile of protein being tested is compared to a reference protein that has been assigned a score of 100 the EAA in lowest qu quantity relative to the reference protein is determined to be the limiting amino acid. This limiting amino acid generally signifies the ability of the protein to fulfill a human's nutritional requirements according to the Journal of Nutrition. However, this method does not address digestibility. So it's faulty. Protein efficiency ratio. The protein efficiency ratio is a somewhat outdated method, though it is used by governments around the world. Lab rats <laughs> are fed set amounts of a protein and then measured as they grow. The amount of weight they gain in grams is divided by the amount of protein eaten in grams given a PER score. This method is beginning to come under criticism just now as it does not take into account that humans need a different amino acid profile than rats. And there are several, there are several unmeasured variables. Well, and it doesn't test digestibility. <laughs> but then we got the PDCAAS to the rescue. Protein digestibility corrected amino acid score. Woohoo! is the current gold standard for determine, determining protein quality. It is used by the Food and Agricultural Organization, uh, an organization that takes money from the food industry, wink wink, as well as the World Health Organization, the very corrupt, this is all on record, WHO, whose stated goal is to put the whole world on a plant-based diet. The same who, who used fraudulent data, bad studies, bad science, and or misinterpreted shit science to be able to say that meat causes cancer, which is complete and utter nonsense, if you just think logically. But let's not act like they don't have a plant-based agenda for the whole world. So they cannot be objective, and they have a history, a long history, of corruption. Go figure. It refers to...
to the quality of a protein in terms of the amino acid requirements of two to five year old humans. Two, two to five year old humans. How does that apply to older people? We'll get to that in a second. Like the chemical score, the PDCAAS looks at the limiting amino acid, but it also takes into account digestive efficiency. Just a little bit. Let's read about this. So, little pause to reflect. Anytime you have a vegan tell you, well, this contains such and such protein or has this much of this amino acid, so on and so forth, and it's complete and blah, 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 blah. Ask them which method was used to arrive at the score, this conclusion, these values. Ask them which method was used. If they don't know which method was used, it doesn't matter what the results say. You need to know the method so that you could criticize how these values were arrived at, right? If they don't have the method, if they don't know what the method was, you could throw out the results because it doesn't mean anything. What if they used rats to determine this? Anyway, the protein digestibility corrected amino acid score is a method of evaluating the quality of a protein based both on the amino acid requirements of humans and their ability to digest it. The PDCAAS rating was adopted by USFDA and the Food Ag and Agriculture Organization, both organizations heavily funded by the food industry, and the United Nations World Health Organization. We already addressed those jokers. In 1993, WHO decided that this was the preferred best method to determine protein quality. But because this method came under so much criticism, in 2013, FAO proposed changing to digestible indispensable amino acid score. Except they have yet to do it. Hmm. Corrupt? You better believe it. So let's read about the PDC AAS method. The protein quality rankings are determined by comparing the amino acid profile of the specific food protein against a standard amino acid profile with the highest, HIGHEST possible score being a 1.0. Why not higher? Hmm? We'll get to that. This score means after digestion of the protein, it provides per unit of protein 100% or more of the indispensable amino acids required. 100% or more, but you don't know anything about or more because they capped the score at 1.0. We'll get to that. The formula for calculating the PDCASS percentages, whatever, that's not that important. But they basically look at the, the protein, they isolate the food as it goes in, and then they look at your poop and what's left in the poop, right? The PDC AAS value is different from measuring the quality of protein. Okay, they list these other tests and say how this is better. No qualm there. The PDC AAS allows evaluation of food protein quality based on the need of humans as it measures the quality of a protein based on the amino acid requirements adjusted for digestibility. Just a little bit of a two to five year old child. Okay, problem. A two to five year old child's metabolism is a lot faster and more voracious than someone who's 20, 30, and especially somebody who's 60, right? Or even older. Because the child is growing very fast. So the kid is likely to be able to access this protein better. Moreover, a two to five year old child needs what? I don't know, 10, 20 grams of protein a day. Very little in comparison to a 200 pound male, adult, right? Maybe, and I don't know this, I'm just speculating, maybe those first few grams of protein are very easy to get out of the food, but later on, because of who knows what, the enzymes being spent, Maybe your stomach acid, you know, becoming a little bit more alkaline because of the 
or less acidic rather because of all the alkaline food you pump in there who knows right it's shady for them to use two to five year olds right because this is a corrupt organization and then try to extrapolate those results even though those kids metabolisms are completely different than an adult metabolism to use the results of those kids and apply them to adults that that's just pseudoscience jeez the BV they criticize the BV method blah 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 okay and then the FDA gave two reasons for adopting the PDCAAS in 1993 one is that it's based on human amino acid requirements which makes it more appropriate for humans than method a method based on the amino acid needs of animals easy decision to make I mean it's ridiculous they use that first test in the first place and then the FAO and WHO had previously recommended that they use this for regulatory purposes so there's outside pressure right hmm. politics the limitations of the method amino acids that move beyond the terminal ilium of the body which is right at the end of the small intestine where protein absorption happens and then the colon begins where there isn't very much protein absorption happening and that is where we break down cellulose just a little bit we can't really digest cellulose except a little bit now if you know anything about plant cell walls they're made of cellulose so you know if you microwave your food you will break down that wall right if you pressure cook it you're likely to break down that wall I don't know about all of them but you will break down some of those cell walls if you microwave it pressure cook it you know if you throw it in a Vitamix your food you're likely to break down a lot of those cell walls maybe not all right but most people don't do that with most of their food and even if you do you know we're not sure if you're breaking down all the cell walls right and pr the protein what I'm trying to say is locked behind those cell walls right so because cellulose some very little cellulose digestion happens in the colon which is where all the vegan farts come from right eating lots of beans will make vegans bloated a lot of the times because there is some of the cellulose being broken down in the colon however by the time that cell gets in the colon and gets a little bit more or somewhat broken down the ones that weren't broken down by the process of you know microwaving or what have you there's no protein absorption happening over there but the protein is being consumed it might be getting consumed by bacteria so it won't show up in your poop but you're not going to absorb it anyway because the bacteria will consume it you dig that's why this method sucks this this is exactly what this tells you they may pass out of the body or may be absorbed by bacteria thus will not be present in the feces and will appear to have been digested the PDC AAS takes no account of where the proteins have been digested so it doesn't really look at digestibility very well similarly amino acids that are lost due to anti-nutritional factors right we know plants contain tons of anti-nutrients especially something like beans which is supposed to be a really good source of protein amino acids that are lost due to anti-nutritional factors present in many foods are assumed to be digested according to the PDC AAS right pseudoscience bogus test due to this and obviously the criticism that came from outside or unbiased scientists the FAO proposed changing to the digestible indispensable amino acid score but it still hasn't done that go figure then this Wikipedia article also talks about the limitations of focusing on single proteins which isn't how people eat so that's another problem with the test and they talk about the capped score so for example something like cow's milk just gets a 1 when it could be 1.6 eggs could be 1.3 and they get a 1 because they cap it right and then you look at 
Soy? Eh, not quite a one, is it? But they probably round it off and call it one, don't they? And you look at all these plant foods, they can't get up to one. None of them are complete protein. None of them are complete protein. Fact. So let's read about this new test that has been have been proposed. Why haven't they adopted it yet? The FAO released a report recommending a new advanced method for assessing the quality of dietary proteins. Look, not everybody in these organizations is corrupt. You got to keep that in mind. So there are forces even within these nefarious organizations that won't want to do good. The report, Dietary Protein Quality Evaluation in Human Nutrition, recommends the, that the Digestible Indispensable Amino Acid Score, the IAAS, replace the PDCAAS as the preferred method of measuring protein quality. The report recommends that more data be developed to support full implementation, but in the interim, protein quality should be calculated using this new method, derived from fecal crude protein digestibility data. Under the current PDCAAS method, values are truncated to a maximum score of 1.0, even if scores derived are higher. It's completely biased in favor of plants to try to make them look like they're the protein quality is comparable to animal products when it isn't. Anyway, still, this test, even if adopted, does not seem to be looking at digestibility anyway, but it's a little bit better. So, for example, using the DS method, researchers are now able to differentiate protein sources by their ability to supply amino acids for use by the body. So maybe it does look at digestibility better, a little bit better. For example, the DS method was able to demonstrate the higher bioavailability of dairy proteins when compared to plant-based protein sources. Would you look at that? Data in the FAO report showed whole milk powder, which, let me stop right here, is pasteurized, is homogenized, a lot of the good stuff in it is destroyed. Then it's processed into milk powder. Gee, why did they use whole milk powder and not raw milk, do you think? Why do you think they did that? Because they're corrupt. But even though they used this heavily processed, pasteurized shit food derived from milk, it still got a score of 1.22, which on the old test would have been 1.0. Higher than the DS score of 0.64, for peas, ooh, great source of protein, and 0.4 for wheat. DS determines amino acid digestibility at the end of the small intestine. Okay, so it does look at digestibility, providing a more accurate measure of the amount of amino acid absorbed by the body and the protein contribution to human amino acid and nitrogen requirements. PDCAS is based on an estimate of crude estimate of crude protein digestibility determined over the total digestive tract. The, and values stated using this method generally overestimate the amount of amino acids absorbed. They overestimate the plant amino acids being absorbed because they cap uh, animal-based foods at 1.0, right? Completely biased. Completely ridiculous, completely pseudoscientific, but it's not okay to say, use these strong words in the scientific community because it's going to be your ass. You're going to lose your job. But that's exactly what this is. And another thing, even once they adopt this new test, which is much better, we'll see if they do, they can still manipulate the results by growing, let's say they want to test beans, growing their beans in very rich soil full of animal manure and maybe even some chemical, targeted chemical fertilization to create the most nutritious, most powerful bean on the planet, not like the stuff that you buy at the store grown in your depleted soils, which, you know, these tests don't even apply to in the first place because when the who, uh, World Health Organization, whose, again, stated goal is to put the whole world on the 
plant-based diet who as I just showed you are trying to make plants look better than what they are actually you know why wouldn't they why wouldn't they use the best possible you know um, beans of beans of superior quality to the stuff you buy in the store that's grown in depleted soils with nothing but you know chemical fertilizers why wouldn't they grow this super bean to try to make food look its best while at the same time you know getting their milk from a cattle farm that they went to tested the soil and found out that the soil is deficient and this and this and that or maybe animals that are you know fed mostly grain they don't get much sunlight right just unhealthy animals why wouldn't they do that get milk from there and then turn it into milk powder you know and and call it milk you know so there's lots of room not only in the interpretation phase of the study but before the study even begins for manipulation and that's unfortunately how a lot of these studies happen they're manipulated before they even begin so even if they adopt this new protein quality measurement and maybe they're just the reason why they haven't adopted is it is because they're working on ways to manipulate these studies they're testing it out and looking how they can manipulate these studies to make once again as they did in the past animal products look as you know inferior as possible or not as good as they actually are and try to make plants look better than what they actually are as far as protein quality measurement right so but this test is not really a reality yet what they've been using so far is a very flawed pseudoscientific test that, well, I mean, maybe it's not completely pseudoscientific, but there are elements of pseudoscience there. I mean, Jesus, they're looking at little kids with, you know, very, very, very fast metabolisms, for example. I mean, there are so many problems with that test. It's completely ridiculous, the results thereof, right? So anybody who says that plant protein is of equal quality to animal protein is just uneducated, ignorant, and it's just, you know, parroting something some plant-based, pro-plant-based diet website told them. Something some vegan doctor said in some video. Okay? They don't know what they're talking about. Ask them next, next time which test was used to determine the quality of this protein. And if they give you any of the tests that were shown in this video, well, you could basically wipe your ass with the results. All right? Thank you, everybody, for watching, checking out my video. Be sure to subscribe for more quality content. It's not an entertainment channel. We try to educate the people on this channel. And um, give the video a thumbs up. And next time you see a vegan, slap them up a little bit. All right? Thanks, everybody.